Exercise 5. In this exercise, using VIACAD 2D, 3D, we're going to take a look at how to create a freeform shape bottle, similar to the one you see here, with a few variations to it. Um, also, near the end, we'll take a look at how to create a mold as well. In this case, um, let me bring back the solid here. You can actually hide this part here. Shaded to transparency. And inside there, you can see the cavity. Okay, so let's begin. A couple other projects I've been working on. All right, I'm going to start with a new part file. I'm going to go ahead and go to my work plane, and if you turn on, let's see, show work plane. As well as view, branch I work plane show grid. Okay, some other settings up here. If you right click on where it says via up here, about preferences, um, under custom resolution, uh, if you do not set these up, you have a tendency to get very faceted looking models, especially on freeform shapes. So my uh, recommendation is set the curve angle to 1.5 and the facet angle to 2.0 and the resolution super fine. All right, so we're going to begin by drawing the base. And I'm just going to take the line tool and align it to the origin. And just about out here, about an inch and a half to the left, click and drag across, drag a line, and then right click to end it. Make it three inches in length. We'll make a very small bottle. Also, um, we'll go ahead and set this at minus 1.5 for the location so it's centered. Okay, another thing you can do too, if you want, um, you have the ability to underweight, maybe make it two pixels, maybe a little bit thicker so it's easier to see on your screen. It all depends on your resolution that you're working on. Okay, at this point, I want to go ahead and introduce you to the splines or interpolate splines tool. Um, just glide up here onto the vertex, and under snaps, you can see my snap settings I have right now. As long as you have those set up, you're in good shape. Click here. Drag up a little bit, maybe in a uh, square and a half up. Click, click, drag across here. Click, click, and close it at the end. Right there. And then right click. Okay, again, I'm going to change the weight to two pixels there. Also, if you right click on it, you have the ability to show points. So you can see the points that are there. And here, if you want to make a nice smooth transition, you could actually grab this end here. And what you have to do, you have to click and drag a little box surrounding that little point. And now you can use the gripper and drag it straight vertical down. It actually just aligns itself, kind of snaps. And over here, you could do the same thing. Click and drag over that little fence. Then right click. And um, actually, in this case, right click over the curve somewhere and hit change direction. And now you can see the little arrow there. Do the same thing, click and drag a little fence around it, drag it straight down. It should snap along Y, so it's nice and smooth. So it'll make a, it'll make a tangent cross when we mirror this, because this, we're making one half of our bottle. Now if you want, you could also click and drag around each one of these points, and then grab the center of the gripper, and you could adjust it, and and make the model look smoother, or uh, you could even add spline points up here. You have the ability to add spline points or delete spline points. You just click on it and select where you want to drop it. It's a pretty nice, uh, pretty nice set of tools here, considering uh, that it's a budget software title. Okay, so once you got that set up and it looks pretty smooth to, to your liking, I'm not going to use any dimensions here. You can just kind of freeform it. Um, we're pretty much done with that. We could go ahead and if you want to rotate it a little bit. Now the next thing I want to do is take your work plane and go to the front. And then go ahead and turn on to grid. So it'll snap to the grid. Okay. And at this point, I would recommend going back to the spline tool here, the interpolate spline. Glide up to this endpoint right here. Make sure it says endpoint. Click. And then snap to a grid marker here. 
be right about there. Click and drag it across and up a little bit until you snap to the top of the grid, then right click. Now rotate it around, make sure it's planar. That's why I was using the grid. Otherwise it sometimes goes down, dips in, and goes in three dimensions there, which is cool stuff, but we don't want it for this particular case. Okay, now let's go ahead and do the same thing here. At the end point, click, drag this out, maybe get it onto a spline point there, or a point, bring it in a bit, using the grid, you can have it come out a little bit too if you want. And then right click. Again, rotate, make sure it looks planar. It's not dipping down in anything. You can also change these too, um, the properties on here. Let's click up here. Um, right click on that. And over here we have the uh, weight. You can change the weight or the color. Usually two to three pixels. Does a nice job. Do the same over here. So you can see those a little clearer. We could set that up in the preferences as well as a default if you, if you like. Okay, so now that we have those two guide curves, now we're going to go ahead and my recommendation, I found when I um, sweep one half of this and then mirror it, sometimes I get some quirky results. Um, the last couple I made were fine, but there were a couple that I could have swore everything was right on, and when I mirrored it, and then I tried to unite them using the Boolean union tool here. Uh, had some issues. So um, it's almost not a bad idea to actually mirror this across to the other side, creating both sides. Uh, one other thing I did though in that other bottle was I all I did to make that little scallop cutout was to actually um, just draw a little circle on here. Oops, actually, I mean, if you do do if you do decide to do this, just be aware um, you have to change your work plane. I'm just going to go back to the top or global. And then you could go ahead and maybe turn off the grid. Snap on one of these points. Stay away from one of your spline points there. And you could drag out a little circle. And then what you can do from here is just trim that out. Okay, now you get these little squares. Don't worry about that. Those are actually nice little handles. You can use that to adjust the, your geometry. Now right click and deselect. And now holding shift, I'll actually make sure you're back in trim. And shift select these two lines, release shift, and then select the top of that arc. Okay. And now also use the uh, fillet two lines. You can click on that. We'll keep it at 0.125. Actually, it's, yeah, that should be fine. Click here and here, and then here and here. So if you wanted to add a little detail like that, you can. Um, I don't know if it really looks that great. I, I was just having a little fun with it to dress it up a bit. Okay. Now, if you want, we can mirror that over to the other side, or we could continue making our solid, bring it over later. It's really up to you. I think I've had better success actually mirroring it as a sketch right now. So I'm going to try that. Let's go to the mirror tool over here. And there's two mirrors. There's the uh, mirror, and then there's linked mirror. You want the linked mirror, so they can stay the same. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and click on our selections here, on the geometry that we want to copy over, release it, and now it's looking for two points, so you can just make sure, and I think this might be where I made a mistake last time, because if you notice, I, I had my grid on, um, and it might have actually snapped to the grid, thus not creating the geometry that I wanted. Okay, with this line, just click on it, right-click, and hide. And now we're going to go ahead and sweep that. So let's go over here, find the two rail sweep. And we'll go ahead and click and drag a fence surrounding just the geometry we want for the base. And then select the first rail and the second rail. Okay, and there's our freeform shape. Okay, some of the other things we might want to do at this point. Um, let me turn off the work plane, hide it at least. And we're going to go ahead and put some fillets under here. So go to the fillet tool, set it to 
point one. Um, what's really neat is uh, if you ever do get the full-blown version of Shark FX, which is the, the high-end version of the software, you have um, curvature continuous uh, filleting with surfaces, so you can model this in surfaces and put in some pretty detailed geometry. And, and also you could add constraints and things, which is really nice too. But uh, this is absolutely amazing, the tools that this little package has in it for the $99 price. I'm going to go ahead and put that fill in there. I think I'm going to go ahead and dress this up a little bit more. I'm going to cut this down a little bit. I'm going to go to my work plane, show my grid, and work plane front. And go to view front. It's upside down, that's okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a little arc here. Use the uh, start end arc. And right about here, click until I'm right about there. Click and then drag out an arc. I'll take the line tool, draw some geometry here. And then take the line tool and I'm going to draw a little um, line here. Let's see right about there. I'm just eyeballing this. And this is going to be for my axis of revolution. Because what I want to do is actually create um, the revolve feature here. So I go to revolve. And then the object I want to lave. Uh, actually, I'm going to put in, I will put in 45 degrees for right now doesn't let us go in both directions at the same time on this version. But if you right click on this geometry, select chain, and then select the axis, goes around like that, and then we could just mirror that to the other side too. So if we go to the mirror tool again, select that object, and start for the reference. Oops. Uh, Actually, I think I have to go to work plane and set it back to the level. Okay, and now I should be able to select this edge. edge. There we go. I think I'll also unite those two parts first. And then go over here and we'll select subtract. Select the solid subtract from, which is the bottle, and then select this geometry. And if you look at this closely, basically it's going to make a nice curve on the top. There we go, versus just a flat shape. It's hard to see. Remember, you could always uh, right click on the part, go to color, or on the right hand side you can change that. Uh, let's go with something a little bit brighter, maybe. Uh, with the punch blue actually. Make it easier to see. Okay. And we could also add fillets up there too. So if we go to the fillet tool and put in 0.05 radius. Set this edge. There we go. Okay, now the neck of the bottle. For that, what we can do is let's offset the, the work plane. So the work plane offset. And we want to offset it about, um, let's see here, about six inches high, I think. So we want maybe about five inches. Oops. Let's undo that. Or just go back to the uh, work plane global. Work plane offset and minus five. There we go. So now it's up here. Looks pretty good there. Okay, and at this point, we could go to View, Top, and actually, actually, let's go to View Bottom. There we go. Now take our circle, locate somewhere where we want the actual neck of the bottle be put in. And extrude that, and it's inside the part. So if we go to wireframe, you should be able to see it. There it is. And we'll just um, deselect that for a second. Go to extrude, so we could reset that. And set distance, and we'll have it go maybe. Let's see, uh, 
They're about one and a half inches high, actually. That works really well. So the circle. And actually, we need to go negative. All right. And maybe that's a little high. Actually, let's go back to shaded. Maybe make it just one inch. Now, if you don't like what you see, remember, um, and if you're already past it, you could always edit that, or you could just use this tool, which is the push-pull, which is just a phenomenal old tool. You just click on it and drag it and adjust it wherever you want it. Okay, now I'm going to unite those. And we'll go to the Blend tool. Try to fill it in. Let's put in a smaller point of 3. work plane, go back to global. Also, I like to clean up some of my curves. I usually just hide them. Uh, it is a good practice, though, to use the uh, Concept Explorer and put them on layers. You can do that as well. Or here you just go to hide all and select curves. There we go. Okay, now you can shell it if you wanted to try. There's the shell tool. You can go to shell and set it to 0.02 thick. It might not shell all the time, but um, that's just kind of the nature of the beast. Even the higher end modelers have the same issue, depending upon the complexity of the part. You can select the top face to shell out. And there it goes. It's hollowed out. All right, now if you want, you could go back to the shell and suppress it or actually remove the feature. If you're going to make a bottle mold, uh, like for blow molding, it's actually pretty easy. All you need to do is you uh, let's go back to work plane, and let's go to our front, and we'll go to view front, and let's draw our rectangle. We'll use the grid as our guide here. So right about here to here. And then we just go to extrude. Let's change the color of that. That makes up a little bit. Looks more like steel. White. Okay, and at this point, now we just subtract it. I'll select the, the metal part first and then hold the shift key. Actually, uh, Oh, we don't want add. Sorry. Subtract here. Okay, select the metal part for the mold. And then hold control and select the bottle. And what we can do is go to layers and we'll add in some additional layers here. We'll call this the mold. Just click on this two times. Count one thousand. Click on it a second time, I should say, to type in a new name for it. Just layers. Mold. And layer one, we will call the um, bottle. Okay, now we can click on the bottle. And over here, we just have to go find the layer options, which it is on the bottle. Okay, so now let's click on this part. And that needs to be on the mold. And so if we hide the bottle, there is our mold. And you just repeat those steps for the other side. Obviously, you put a thread in, probably, and so it couldn't be mirrored to the other side if it had a thread in it. Turn off my work plan or my grid. And that concludes this exercise.